Hello, YouTube world. We are Ditching Babylon. Um, we're here to just talk a little bit about ourselves to let you all know what influenced us to make the um, trip over here to Rhonda, why we left, and so on. But I'm going to start with my lovely wife here. Let her be kick. It, let well, let her kick it off, and um, we'll go from there. It's on you, babe. Hello. <laughs> um, my name is Camille. I already know. So my reason for wanting to leave the United States and move to Rwanda. Originally, we looked at three places: uh, Ghana, Tanzania, Rwanda, which seems to be the norm for a lot of people. Um, Rwanda went out because of the security aspect, um, safety, no there you go, no corruption, no corruption. Um, ease of business, ease of business, they finishing out for me. Those were all the factors that we thought about moving here. Um, also as well as leaving, um, there's a lot going on in the U.S. Everybody watching knows there's a lot going on in the U.S. And it's really... I think, it's my personal opinion, it's hard to live up to your full potential when there are so many factors that kind of take away from your carefree mindset, living your life without worries of safety and being pulled over by police. Um, and all, all those things were a factor. So I thought at 52, I think it's probably time to experience life in a different system. Um, separating from a lot of the things that the West seems to value. Uh, I would say the sexual issues that they have as far as being promiscuous, and sex on the billboards, it's on the TV, everything is geared around money and sex and things like this. And it's a little my whole life, you know? It's, it's something that we're all familiar with and I think we've become desensitized to it. And coming to somewhere like this, where it's fresh, um, no place is going to be heaven until heaven does come. Um, so there's no perfect place, but I think Rwanda is as close to perfect as you can get. The people are genuine and friendly. Um, have met. We're going to be here three weeks, so we haven't met everybody, but have not felt one uh, aggression or threat or anything from anybody. Everybody's on the opposite, so open and so friendly that it's still shocking, you know, that people just walk into a store and want to give you their telephone number and genuinely, yes, I'll come over and just want to talk, things like that. Want that's, to get to know you. Want to get to know you. Um, that's, that's, that's new. It's new. It was hard when we first got here because we still were functioning like we were in the West, expecting something to happen, um, something would be out there, but being here, there is peace, there is space to think, there is um, just a calmness. So just you can hear it and feel it in, in the people. And, and I think that is something that's going to allow everyone who comes to think differently because it removes obstacles that you didn't know maybe you were under. You know, you're, you're thinking negatively about so many things and you get like a peaceful moment. <coughs> it's like, it's like you can actually have a clear thought. So that's a small part, summing it all up. That's the freedom. Freedom to find out who I really am without oppression or thoughts of things that come to my family, things like that. All right, I'm next. Hi. <laughs> my name is Melissa. Um, I'm the daughter. <laughs> so <laughs> um, for me, Part of the motivation or helps me to detach from the U.S. Well, well, I guess one of the things I got fed up with with the U.S. is that um, as far as my people, um, when it comes to African Americans, um, we struggle really hard to survive. And we live uh, just to survive. We don't live to live. And U.S., for some, or I'll say for most, really don't. Uh, provide that kind of living, living to live, live, you know, we want to enjoy life. Um, and 
I got tired of seeing my people work so hard to be disrespected, um, to not be to not be treated fairly. Um, they just put in too, way too much work, and there's no good in return. And so I feel like it's kind of like a waste. Um, some may agree, some may disagree, like, you know, our people um, built this country and we shouldn't let it go and uh, we should fight for it. But I don't want to be in a place where I, I'm not appreciated. Um, I don't want to be in a place where I'm tolerated. I want to be in a place where I'm wanted. And I want to be in a place where my work, my money, my time um, is fruitful. And I can see that here in Rwanda. There's so many opportunities here in Rwanda. And here, people see you uh, for who you are. Your actions speak for you. Um, so it's not, you know, the first judgment they see maybe is how kind you are versus the skin color, you know. Unlike in the US, when you're first judged by your appearance, um, everything is so vain. Um, it's, it's like a rat race, and um, I didn't want to be a part of that. I, I don't. So there's that purity of life here. Yeah, it's, exactly. It's a purity of life here, and you can live to live. You you, you know you don't have to uh, live to you know you don't have to work to live. Or you, or, oh, I said that wrong. You don't have to struggle so much. So yeah, pretty much it. Well, it's going to be hard for me um, to really say anything of any substance because of what the both of them just said. Because um, I share a lot of the same opinions that they shared with me. Um, so I'm going to try to come up with something different. <laughs> um, they didn't make it easy for me, but I'm going to give it a shot. I want to take this moment right now to address the Rwandans and I'll, I would also say people of any of the 54 countries on the continent. Um, we, if you want to call us African Americans, we've been brought up and trained in a system that has infected our minds with many, many different types of sicknesses, okay? We that are coming over here from the West, over here to the East, we're sick, that's true, we are. Many of us don't know it, don't realize it, but we, but we are, we have a sickness. There is no way that you can, for generations, be beat down, told that you're less than, actually being compared to animals, and in some cases, even less than animals. There are many cases where the animals were valued above our ancestors. Killing our ancestors, hanging them from trees, burning them, cutting their private parts off while they're hanging up in a tree and taking it home to put on their mantles. Seeing that happen to us over and over and over for generations, it causes a sickness. You know, there are many people in the military in the U.S. specifically, that when they go to war, they get they come back home. They have PSTD, and then they can get treated for that because it's a it's a mental sickness. It really is. It was caused by hardships, traumas, stressful situations that these men and women had to live through, live in. But they only did it 
for a short amount of time compared to what my ancestors, our ancestors, have gone through. So if a person can go to war and the war lasts three, six months, a year, a couple of years, and they come back home and they need help, they need psychological help because of the traumas that they've gone through, the, the, the killings that they've seen, people brutalized, mangled, they've seen all of this and it messes with their head. So therefore, to function in society, they need to get help. If they need that from experiencing something for months or just a couple of years, how much more would we need it? We were raised by generations of men and women who had the sickness. They taught us to have the sickness. They raised us to have the sickness. The sickness is all we know. It is all we know. We don't know anything other than that. So whenever we African-Americans come over here to the continent, I'm just asking for the people that did not have to go through this, although you were colonized, but just be a little patient with us. You know, we, we, we really need you to be patient with us. We, um, we're not, many of us come over, over to the continent, we want to come to the continent and contribute to build up the countries that we choose to settle in. Not to come over here and take from you guys. No, I mean, I'm not gonna speak for myself and my family. We want to build Rwanda. We want Rwanda to be the country that all other countries look look at as an example. That's what we want. We come over here. We've already invested in Rwanda, and we've got hopefully, most I willing, many more investments to come. But yeah, that's the sickness that we have. I mean, it wasn't really. It wasn't really that in my face till I just started looking at how over here you can have little kids. Mm -hmm. I mean, talking about look like they're about five, seven years old, walking to school by themselves on the street, happy, and and have to, don't have to worry about anyone doing anything to them. Mm -hmm. They have the freedom, the freedom to be children. Not like in the US, where if a little child sees a cop, they immediately get afraid, and in some cases start crying uncontrollably. Mm -hmm. Or hide, because of the fear of what that cop may do to them, regardless of whether, whether the cop sees them or not. They see the cop, and then instantly, fear is invoked. There's none of that over here. We see policemen almost on every corner over here. Sometimes you see them holding guns, mm -hmm. but it's so, it is so non-threatening. Yeah. It is so non-threatening. You don't feel at all that your life is in any kind of jeopardy. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we had to get out of the US uh, because we, like, like it, was, like it was said before, I'm just gonna echo their points. We didn't feel like we were wanted. We know we're not wanted over there. But many of us that are in the US are not in a position to move out right now. Could be finances or what have you. But then there are also some of us over there who are in the position to move out and, and just for whatever reason don't want to. You're happy in Babylon. You're happy in, or shall I say, on 
Massa's plantation. Let's call it what it is, okay? America started out a certain way and has not changed. It hasn't changed. It hasn't changed. The U.S. will give you all kinds of shiny little toys, all kinds of tri trinkets to give you a false sense of security. But you're not secure. Not at all. Not at all. You, anytime you can work for 30 years, pay off a house, and fall behind on your taxes, and they take the house from you, that itself proves to you that the house never really is never really yours. Because if it was truly yours, they could not take it from you. That doesn't go on over here. Yeah. If you can, and I'm not saying everyone needs to come over here and move over here, because quite frankly, I don't believe that. I don't believe that every so-called black person in America needs to move to Africa. I'm not one of those that believe that. Quite frankly, because of the mindset of some, you're better off staying in Babylon. You're better, not, you're better off staying in the US because that mindset that you have, you don't need to bring that over here. You don't need to taint this land with the poison that's in your head that you refuse to let go of. So yeah, do you need to come visit? Yeah, you, yeah, I think you need to visit so you can have something to compare what you know to. Because if you just live in one box all your life, you're only gonna know the inside of those four walls of that one box. That's all you're gonna know. Once you get out of that box, you can see the beauty of the world. I believe as great as this country is, the people of this country is what makes this country great because the people of this country is truly what is great about this country. You know, one of the things you're talking about, um, just this is in the last day, it just made me think about something I've not seen here, which was, it took me a while to realize it, but when I did, it was shocking. You don't see cat calling. I have not seen a young brother or any man, hey, 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 not, not even his looks. That was shocking. Like, that's what I'm talking about as far as having a culture that sex is so instrumental in. It's everywhere. I mean, selling burgers. Burgers. Why do I need to see the, the kind of advertisement I see? Right. Just buying a burger, a hot dog. I don't understand it. It's you know that's the it's your choice to live there and, and see those things. But some of us are like realizing that there's a purpose behind a lot of the things that are happening in the U.S. Mm -hmm. and we just choose not to participate. So we're choosing not to participate. I like being up here and seeing beautiful sisters walking on the street and still being respected. True. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. I love seeing brothers walk down the street and still carry themselves respectful. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. You know, true. the old, old, older generation, I would say old people, but the older generation are respected. They're cared for. And not because they ask. It's volunteer. If you need help, they come to you and just, hey, let me help you. Mm -hmm. These are the things I've never seen. I mean, I've never seen these things. That says a lot, you know, so yeah, we wanted to experience something different. We are here loving something different. I want to add to part of what my dad was saying about, um, I guess the sickness, it's not so, I think it's, a lot can fall into that category. One of the things I realized, um, the can-do mentality here, mm -hmm. um, because the Rwandan people have a need they do for themselves. Mm -hmm. Unlike in the U.S. where we're, de we're dependent upon other people to do it for us, the system to do it for us, and it kind of handicaps us in a way. Mm -hmm. um, also, um, as it pertains to African Americans, I know that when we try to strive for something, often we're shut down, shot down 
Um, we might be successful for a little bit, but eventually we're shot down. And that uh, puts a, uh, a cloud in our judgment, in our mind, like it, it, it stifles our confidence. Um, yeah, we feel like we can't do for ourselves, like, oh, you know, we often have the mindset, oh, I can't do that because of X, Y, and Z, or I'm going to fail. This person, you know, has privilege, and although that is a factor, and that's true, um, we, oftentimes we won't even try to easily accept defeat. Yeah, we easily accept defeat. Unlike here in Rwanda, there, there is no, there's no obstacle other than your mind and, um, and how you conduct yourself around people. You know, oftentimes uh, if, if you, you attract, you get what you attract. So if, if you're a kind person, respectful person, you're going to get that back in return. Um, I've never seen anybody act irate here, but no, no. no. Not, not, not even, even the slightest. Not an argument, mm -hmm. not a disagreement, not mm -hmm. a strong debate. Mm -hmm. um, I've seen more people just just walking, holding hands, and not in a romantic thing. We're friends, we're walking together, we're holding hands. That's mm -hmm. what we do. And it's not a perversion, or it's not sexually based. It's just a genuine, open heart. We are friends. We walk hand in hand. I want to say this, since I've been over here, my contact list <laughs> and my phone has doubled. Mm -hmm. It really has. Just in three weeks, it's doubled. Um, and all people that I've met for the very first time, you know, just want to know me, just want to talk to me, you know, I mean, that's, that's 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 mind blowing. That would never happen in the states. Yeah, you There's don't. Too much suspicion. Yeah, 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 you don't get that in the states. You <laughs> it's know. Too much. What you want my number for? And even some of you right now, that's watching this, that's hearing me say that, some of you are thinking, well, you better be careful because you know they probably want something from you. Yeah, some of you are thinking that again. That's that sickness that I was talking about. That's the sickness. Something is always coming around the corner. This person coming into your home, hey, lock this up, lock that up, you know, do this, do that. I mean, person thinking that way, you? I mean, me, myself, me, myself, right. <laughs> um, I have worn the uniform of America. I've been a corrections officer in America, D.C., and I've been a police officer in North Carolina. And all of that has taught me to be very suspicious of people. My nature that I was taught to have, again, talking about the sickness, in America is not to be trusting of people, be very suspicious of people. Over here, there's no need for that. And I'm, I'm doing my best, I'm trying to purge that sickness out of my out of my brain because it's, it's not needed over here so why be that way why be suspicious of people who only want to help you yeah. why well, i know we think that we're not we're not uh we're just we're not cautious I mean, not not even cautious that we're, we're being fools we understand right. that you know many people you still need to be watchful we right. are watchful. still be wise Exactly. Not to be wise, exactly. mm -hmm. but there's a difference in being wise and judging things by the way they happen versus when you first meet somebody and you've already done a list of they mean you harm, they're coming to do this, mm -hmm. and watch out for this, look over your shoulder. Mm -hmm. That's that's not that's not normal. Exactly. That's not normal. That exactly. should not that should not be normal. We should not be living our lives first thinking. Let me start distrusting you before a situation has come about to cause the distrust. True. That's part of that mindset that we have been trained and we have accepted. You know, if you do something to me, now I'm cautious, now I'm watching you. You know, I meet someone, just, you don't just meet somebody like, hey, come in my house and meet. No, that's not what we're talking about. Exactly what we're talking about. 
I want to say, I think what kind of contributes to um, that distrust is the in environment. With, you know, in America, how it, how America was birthed and, you know, what America is today. And I'm not a political person. I'm not mm -hmm. into politics or anything like that. But, you know, it's common knowledge that, you know, a corruption goes down in that world. Um, and I there's corruption in Africa too. Oh yeah, absolutely. There's corruption everywhere, everywhere. Um, there, there's corruption everywhere. But uh, I have to say, in Rwanda, they don't tolerate that corruption here. Exactly. So the people can trust their government. Mm -hmm. That lays a foundation for people trusting people. Um, so you can conduct business better and easier and everything. But in the U.S., there's so much BS. There's a lot of red tape you got to go through. It's, for me, it's not so much the red tape. I don't know if you want to make me do this. It's the different standards for people. Uh, true. true. I yeah. don't see that. I don't mm -hmm. see the same standard. And then people mm -hmm. will say, well, maybe their credit was worse. Well, maybe this is all that. You know, make time. That might be a factor here and there. But across the board, you can see a system. You can see... Um, gentrification and, and, and businesses that we don't own and things like this and when you try to you know some like some there are some black restaurants there's some black businesses there are some this is something new that's coming about just because there's been a few successful does not mean the system has changed right. because I'm expecting to see us not dying in the streets so much so that's what I'm yes. expecting us not to if we have the same fear when I get pulled over versus someone else getting pulled over, that's that's them. I can I can accept that. But if I automatically, because of my skin tone, or because my husband is driving because of his skin tone, jump into a fearful state of mind, because I understand that his skin plays a factor in his interaction with a majority of police officers, officers or that situation. That shouldn't be. Those are the things. That's not going to change. Why would you put up with that if you don't have to? I should be able to experience some freedom in my age and, and not live in fear of a lot of things. True. And it's not an unreasonable fear. Anybody who looks at the news and thinks that when we say fear, we're just uh, making things up. You know, you can look at the news and you see situations, you know the stories. And there's still a factor. No, we weren't slaves. Our ancestors were. We still live as a result of things that happen in history with our ancestors today. You know, I don't have to work in the field, but I still have to deal with situations based on my skin tone. True. Okay. <laughs> okay. Y'all ready? Yeah. Okay. So you started recording again. <laughs> you can do that as a blooper. <laughs> oh, whoa. So you started recording again. <laughs> you can do that as a blooper. <laughs> oh, whoa.